Well, it's 1230 pretty much. We have everyone enrolled. We typically end up with a few people straggling in after the fact. So I'm just going to give it just a few more minutes. We only have 13, so I have a feeling we are going to be up for another 20 or 30 if we just wait a few more minutes. Is everyone okay with that? Yeah, of course. Okay. Welcome, guys. We're so excited that you guys are here. Um, this is going to be a really powerful webinar, in my opinion. Uh, I think everyone at Vish, James, Jessica, are expert users, Josh is CEO and co-founder, and and on our planning webinar or our planning Zooms, there was so much great information being shared. Rather you go with Vish or not, it is, in my opinion, um, just based on my observation of all the different salons I have had or brought it in or not brought it in, I think as we modernize the salon industry, Vish is a color management system that I think most salons are going to have to go to color management systems just due to the color volume. If you're a color salon and do a lot of color volume, you're going to need that type of color management system. So I think your software obviously is bar none, hands down amazing. And um, a demo wouldn't hurt anything for anyone. So at the end of the program, I believe that Melina is going to share a, um, a QR code so that you guys can get a demo set up. I would definitely look at it. It is well worth it and it will drive profit up. It's, we're, we're just really impressed with what, what we are seeing so far. So does anyone have any preliminary Q&A before, while we're waiting? Uh, we'll take this time, just a few minutes, just to answer any questions. Does anyone have any questions that are just like burning on the top of their brain that they just wanna bring up right now? And we'll utilize this time a little bit more wisely. Anyone? Please just come off mute if you guys do, or just raise your hand and we'll, uh, you know, in Zoom, of course. Um, and uh, we'll let, we'll let Could I say something? Absolutely. Phyllis, is that you? Yes. Hey, Nikki, yes, how Phyllis, are you? Hey. Yes. hey, Josh, how are you? <laughs> I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm excited to um, be on the seminar today because we actually have this and we love the concept of it and what it does. We have some struggles, but we're working with Josh to work through those right now. But um, I'm really excited to get it back up and running because I have to tell you, now it amazes me how much color is going down our sink. <laughs> when we have the, you know, when we have the scale and we weigh everything, I think it's just more conscious. People are just more aware. Plus, obviously, it has many other benefits. So I'm just wanted to shout out and say, hey, Josh, hadn't really ever seen you in person. So it's nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. Well, not in person, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. this, is, this is the new in person, I believe. So uh, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so um, Phyllis and I uh, and, and Iva, we, we know each other very, very well. And uh, we're great friends. And Phyllis has a beautiful salon in Maryland. Thank you. And uh, she has powered through this pandemic like no other. <laughs> Still mm -hmm. powering. <laughs> I know you are. I know you are. So it is, uh, we're going to go ahead and just kind of do intros. And uh, is there anyone else that has Q&A or has anything that they want to bring up? Before we begin? Everyone good? Okay. Excellent. Well, welcome attendees to How to Slash Your Color Costs and Boost Revenue, presented, um, well, hosted by us and moderated and Mentor Masters is hosting. We got to meet Vish and we're so blown away by everything we've been seeing. So we're really excited to share it with our audience and bring it to the beauty industry. Um, a little history, uh, Josh and Melina and James, if you guys want to share like how long Vish has been around and maybe when you guys get to introductions, just maybe share a little bit about what um, is wonderful about Vish that you guys kind of, the, the, the birth of that. And I think that Josh, you had such an intriguing story when you shared it with me about how it kind of came about because you're in the salon industry, but salon owners are very near and dear to our heart. So we want to welcome uh, everyone here that took the time out today to, to come and we're going to learn so much today. So before, without further ado, um, I'd like to introduce Josh Howard, who is CEO and co-founder of Vish, uh, James Alba, who's one of our co-presenters today, and Jessica Arundel, who is just super smart and wonderful. And James is amazingly cool always. We always love you. 
So uh, whoever would like to go first, I think that um, if we can uh, just jump into introductions. Yeah, I can kick it off here. Um, really appreciate you having us today and pleasure to see everybody on the call. And, you know, as you mentioned, more than happy to connect with anybody one-on-one -on -one after the call if they have any more questions. Um, so I grew up around the salon industry. I didn't come from the salon industry, uh, but my brother, my older brother owned a salon for 20 plus years. He was also a traveling educator as well. And the, the, the system was really designed out of need. Um, as a traveling educator, you know, he would leave his salon and he was like the top revenue generator, which I think a lot of salon owners can really um, attest to is that they're generating a lot of revenue for the salon. And as he grew his salon, the, the profits didn't grow at the same pace. And he had a tremendous amount of waste in his salon. A lot of his money was going down the drain. I mean, next to his labor cost, it was the biggest line item on his P&L. So, you know, traveling as an educator across North America, he was asking other salon owners what they, you know, what, what do they do about hair color waste? And everybody had the same answer. It was like, well, we have this bucket that we put on the counter and then we put all the waste in a bucket. And then after a couple of weeks, we look at the bucket of waste and then we talk to our staff and we say, stop wasting but there wasn't really a solution. So, you know, he sought out, tried to create one, try to build a scale. Um, the first iteration didn't really fly. So he asked me um, to come back and I worked in medical research to come back and kind of give it another go. I jumped in and as we were sort of getting the prototype out there and started going through the data, not coming from the industry, I started asking some questions like, why are they only making money on highlighting services? And he was like, well, what do you mean? And, you know, I was like, well, they're only making hot, you know, they make a lot of, you know, it's a long, it's a high service price with a low product cost. So it's a profit margin, it's healthy in, in highlights. But then when you start getting into all over colors, root retouches, they're done at a break, even a lot of the time, sometimes done at a loss and the toner's done almost exclusively done at a loss. So that's when the, the company really started to evolve and I say, it's not just about waste. You know, that's a small portion of the problem. The bigger problem is that, Profit margins vary widely across each user, each customer, and across all your service providers. So we set out to build the technology and you know we're five years deep now. Well, we hit, we were on the app store um, in April of 2018. And uh, yeah, here we are now, we're in about 1500 locations, mostly in the United States, but we're, you know, we're in 10 different countries. And uh, we've learned a lot with salons and we've learned that Every salon or not every, there, there's so many different ways that salons um, price their services, pay their staff. So we built a system that, you know, really works uh, in all environments. Thank you so much, Josh. Jess, you want to jump on and Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jess. I am one of the owners of Luscious and Company. Uh, we have two salons in Connecticut. And we officially opened in 2014. Um, we had a bit of an untraditional start. My twin sister, who's also my business partner, uh, the two of us worked in corporate America for quite some time, a little over a decade. But we've always had a real passion for the beauty industry. During our time in corporate, uh, we worked in sales and management. And during our time off on weekends and nights, we went to school and um, eventually started our own bridal beauty business. Uh, we were managing the two jobs for uh, years, and during that time, it became so busy that we eventually quit our corporate jobs, cleaned out our savings accounts, and became salon owners. Our journey into being um, salon owners obviously had some obvious challenges that a lot of people face, um, one of which is we wanted to be sure that we could be um, a bit unique in providing our team um, some commitments that we knew off the bat were very important to having long-term sustainable careers. Um, we wanted to be employers of choice. We wanted to attract stylists who were looking for um, a salon home that they could grow in, that we could grow with them as well. Um, and part of that was we really wanted to manage the salon as a business and really encourage people to be creative and live out their passions, but also um, be highly compensated and have benefits that you would find in corporate America jobs that a lot of people uh, may dislike, but felt safe in. Um, we have always charged separately for parts and labor. So our business model is a bit unique from other salon owners. Um, and we think Vish in 2020, when we returned from a very scary 
COVID shut down the rest of the world. We knew that we had commitment to our team, um, of which at that point we only had one salon, but a bit over 18 stylists were looking for guidance. So we if we're moved they're drowning out jessica some someone's on i think someone's uh not on mute iva can you mute everyone everyone can just check their mute to make sure it's all okay iva can you make sure you mute everyone i'm thank on you. it i'm on it thank you all right jess sorry iva thanks no problem uh, so we jumped into VISH in the fall of 2020. Um, we literally jumped right in, feet first. We never looked back. Um, VISH helped us tremendously. One, because we were all, we're already charging separately for uh, the cost of the service so that our team got compensated on the services that they were performing. But also we maintained you know, our commitment into clients paying for their bowls of color. Um, the two biggest benefits that VISH really helped us with was one, it maintained our cash flow during an extremely scary time where we knew we needed to maximize every single dollar, um, we were able to order inventory proactively versus reactively. Um, Vish allowed us to look at exactly what color we were using so that we can um, really you know, look into the future for possible uh, back stock or back orders. We had what we needed on hand so that we never needed to turn into emergency planning for things that we didn't have. Uh, we also were ordering based off of a budget. 8% of our service sales are put aside every two weeks so that we knew exactly what we needed to order more back bar and color. Um, and secondly, we were able to charge guests accurately. Um, as you'll see a few slides later, we are able to see what our profit margins are for bowls of color that our guests pay for. And over the last two years, it's helped us launch employee benefits that are a bit unique to the salon world. We offer all of our team um, employee paid time off, company matched 401k, and we can continue building um, a list of you know, kick-ass services that require a lot of investment to keep going through certifications to maintain our commitment of being the employer of choice. Thank you so much, Jessica. James, you're up. What's going on, everybody? So uh, I'm sure most of you are tired of seeing my face on videos, but you're going to have to deal with me for another 45 minutes, thanks to Nikki and Josh and my my mentors and masters crew. Um, I would say, you know, anything that Jessica said are obviously all huge bonus points for why we use Vish as well. But Josh and I met; we were probably the longest implementation ever for Vish. Um, he came on with his brother Tim, and we had talked early on. So we're a sustainable salon. Uh, we're four time green certified. I don't know of any other salon in the world. I usually say the only one, but I don't know of anybody else that goes through all those hoops to be able to, to have that importance in the environmentalism. And we were doing that whole bucket of color on the side. Matter of fact, we were using our back bar size shampoos that were empty and I was just storing them more to send them back to Green Circle. And they're really heavy and the way Green Circle ships is a little interesting. And I'm like, man, what am I doing with all of these stockpiles of hair color? Um, which obviously as we started to weigh them and take a look at them, it wasn't just the environmental impact of them being washed down the drain or whether they were being recycled or not. It was a money aspect. Um, we really wanted to jump in. I mean, as a matter of fact, 2019, before COVID, Josh and I sat down and we we're like, we're going to do this. We're going to do it right. We're going to be a role model for green salons. And COVID happened. And finally, I said, you know what, let's get this thing done. Um, I am the one that does the inventory ordering. So I don't care what great things Vish does. It saves me so much time in inventory um, that I think that's probably one of my favorite things personally for my job at the desk because I don't do hair. Um, but just having the metrics, I think it's great. Uh, we're even drilling down now that we've been using it exclusively salon wide for the last few years that we're able to drill in by client. So we had an issue, you know, some of you may have clients that require extra color. They've grown their hair out since COVID and some of those things that was sort of contesting what the stylist had been using on her. And we went back and were able to go in and have a meeting with the stylist about what the usage was. So I think that's, you know, when you can take control of your business down to that minute level, I think it's really empowering to be able, not just to, to be environmental and to save money, but to be able to modify services. And um, that was probably one of the very first things Josh and I talked about. He was on an Earth Day call with us a couple of years back about things like glazes and toners, which they're not even, 
uh, break even. They're they're almost exclusively at a loss for most salons. So the money we've been able to recapture with this just on that one little service alone, more than pays for it, more than makes uh, all the other things nice and easy. So we appreciate you, brother. Thank you, James. Okay. All right. So let's get into what is VISH um, from a color management system uh, designed to eliminate color waste, improve profits, and control pricing. So it's basically a three-component system, yes? Josh, do you want to speak on yeah. that? Yeah. So we have a Bluetooth scale that connects to an iPad application. We spend a lot of time. You can see the picture of the iPad. So, you know, we know the stylists are busy and the idea of doing math with the color bar is time consuming and you know they're not really set up to do it so we make it super easy super visual so they mix color the same way they normally would we capture what they're doing and then we have different functions so we can they can adjust how much they want they can reweigh the waste at the end so to make sure that the next time that guest comes in the formula is at their fingertips um so they just you know and we're integrated with most major pos companies so, you know, the PO, the, the services get pushed from the front desk. You mix the same way you normally would. That information then gets passed to the front desk. We have a front desk app that sits on top of your POS. So you can cross-reference of how much you should charge. All of this data is then aggregated on our web app called Vish Dashboard, but we'll show you employee performance, how much color they're using per application, how much they're wasting, how much they're reweighing which is an, it's a benchmark that we have. So we don't talk about waste anymore. We can we encourage as much waste as possible early on. What we do encourage is they reweigh their waste at the end. So that will allow the system to back the waste out. And that will pull your inventory down by about 30 or 40%. Um, but the most, I guess one of the most important things about our company, um, and Jess had mentioned she does parts and labor, which we certainly do. We don't, we don't try to change your way you price your services at all. And we definitely don't touch your front desk for the first 30 days. What we want to do is train your stylist, build a good relationship with your stylist, and we have a very hands-on onboarding approach. Um, so we want to take this data, we cross-reference it with our benchmarks to show you where you can go, but then we discuss, okay, how do we effectively make this integrate with your front desk so your stylists aren't being shocked, your guests aren't being shocked, so you can, you know, work with us to put a plan in place to maximize profits. This isn't a software that you download and it just like, okay, now your problems are fixed. It's a process. We have a large customer success team. We have a lot of former hairstylists that work with owners um, and stylists to make sure that they're taking this data and they're changing their business because there's a lot of problems in all salons, but they're unique and it's a price sensitive market. So the last thing we want to do is shock your guests at the front desk. So we use the software to partner with our, our team to make sure that you get the best solution. I, I'd like to give a perspective of a salon owner um, and, and also just someone who handles a lot of recruitment and a lot of hiring and training. It's something that I take care of a lot. And when you have a system that's a bit more structured like this, it can become a recruitment tool very much when you are doing tours of the salon, when people are getting to see how the color bar is handled, uh, where you're not micromanaging and nickel and diming them about what amount of color they're using, but instead properly teaching them how to properly price for it. I think that's a big shift that a salon owner can make. And having a tool and a resource like this that's not only easy to use, but fun and creative, I think is in, an incredible tool to incorporate and start to really put some, put some thought into. Uh, Jess or James, you what do you, I mean, as you implement it into your salon, did you find that? Absolutely. So we've been using Vish uh, for a little over two years. And uh, at first, I mean, we have a large staff. We have over 30 stylists and our term OGs, like most salons, we're very scared. You know, anything new is scary. And this was something that we, from the management all the way to our lead stylists, um, jumped in feet first. We took all of the manual scales away and we were really looking at this as a tool to give consistency to our team, give consistency to our stylists. And after about two weeks, everyone looked at this tool as kind of being um, a map, so to speak. It's a kind of guest system. So if you were seeing um, the same guests, they were in for their second visit, Vish helps us look at waste and reweigh and things like that, but it also keeps all of our formulas on hand. So it keeps our job and the stylist job a bit easier. If someone wants to tweak something or change something, this helps us guide the vision 
so that we have a map that we can continue using as that guest stays with us. That's brilliant. Thank you, Jess. Uh, James, you, I know your team, you were saying that you really kind of implemented it. Your team is very tight. Yeah. And I have to tell you, that's one of the favorite things that we have, Jess, is the formulas being captured. Um, just because we're big on planning, you know, you have to figure that if you're behind the chair and you're double booked or how are you booking now post COVID, reality of it is you're probably seeing eight clients a day, right? So this is just as strong of an option, you know, if rebooking and retention and referrals and retail are, are part of your consultation and your thought process, if you can go in and look at those past formulas, right? We're, uh, we're hoping spring is around the corner here in Northern New Jersey, where we are. Um, you gives you a little bit of planning and some options to go back, not just in the actual calculation of the formula, but to be able to go back in your software and review and say, you know, I know that client wanted to do some brightening. It's going to get warmer weather or some changes. It just gives you all the tools at your fingertips to be able to do that and, and price accordingly. Right. One of the things that I think is super powerful from this system or if, just a solution for a salon owner that I think is a lot of lost revenue. Ivan and I find when we work with salon owners, there is a lot of mishap happening from the time that they're mixing it in the back, applying, and then to the front desk. Services are missed and things like this. And so that system of going from the stylist, the scale, and then to the dashboard so you can measure and track, and then to the receptionist front desk, I think is really, really important. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing that I don't talk about enough because I'm not a stylist, but the system was created. One of the main functionality was to store the formula. Um, my brother as a salon owner, if someone calls in sick, people are scrambling to try the right, try the right form to find the right formula. And oftentimes stylists are writing down the formula after the fact. So if you're dealing with fashion colors or any vibrance, what you find is that they're mixing, they're rounding out the numbers and they're not giving the exact formulation. So the next time that color, that color comes in or the client comes in, the color is going to be slightly off. So we, we, you know, early on, you know, we really found out that we were reducing the amount of redos as well, um, especially for junior stylists or someone calls in sick. It made a huge impact, but that's one data point that we really haven't been able to hone in on because a lot of people were doing a lot of corrective color and a lot of redos, but weren't tracking it. So we know we reduce it, um, but it's a data point that wasn't tracked before. So it's hard to, it's hard to do a comparison, um, yeah. but that is a vital part of our, of our system. And if you look, so this is our scale here. Um, is a lab quality scale. Um, this is our third generation scale now. And I'm sorry, actually, let me change that. I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. it's okay. It's just um, one thing is that we, our digital scale has no display on it. So when, that's one thing that we do is we capture 100% of the formulas that are mixed. So that's why our inventory is so spot on. That's awesome. James, these are some stats from you guys. Um, Tell, tell us about that a little bit. Yeah, like I said, on, by the way, the, um, you know, I would say from the very beginning, the reduction in inventory was a huge factor for us. Um, we did our implementation right during COVID while we were split shifted as a staff. So it wound up being a great way for anybody that wants to implement it helped us, even though we have a tight knit team, we had a team A and a team B. So we were able to work with team A really close with the Vish education team. And then they actually became in salon trainers to help the second team to go through. So if you're someone that has a really large salon, that's not a bad way to be able to get in and have trainers on staff that understand it. What I love about um, what Vish does now is in trying to recruit and bring on younger staff, it looks like any other app and it's very intuitive. I mean, people like to have, listen, somebody drops their phone on the counter for five minutes, they lose their mind that they want it back in their hand. So it modernizes something that's been so archaic with uh, index cards and color formula boxes. Uh, Josh, I hate to say it, my absolute favorite thing I think is not having the stupid counter with all these color boxes. I've regained counter space, uh, which I, I think uh, most people in their dispensary would love to gain some more counter space. Uh, but the reduction in inventory has been great. And the, the rewang for us environmentally has been uh, not just something that we like to look forward to in terms of not sending as much color back to green circle, but it sort of gives that double edge of being able to save green and be greener overall. So uh, it's, it's been paramount for us. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think that launching these type of things, the, the, the big positive that I really see, if I can just focus in on that again, is that it narrows down a training system for teaching your team how to mix, how to weigh, how to measure, how to formulate, how to track data. I mean, it's it's giving life to that arena, which a lot of saloners don't really put a lot of focus on. And they're wondering why there's all this mishap around it, you know? So this is a, a really yep. just 
Great tool. Yeah, we track we track um, how much color is being used per application, broken down by each individual service type as well. So it enables salon owners to actually choose what education they're picking. So if you know if if you're finding that you're wasting a lot, you're not generating a bunch of revenue on balayage, then it's probably a good idea to get a balayage class in. And then within the salon as well, you can see some of the super efficient at a service, and you can start doing some cross education. So the data is incredibly valuable. Um, in the salon, so doing cross education, but also bringing in external education as well. Right. So, uh, Jessica, do you want to share? This is this is your company, Luscious and Company. Do you want to share a little bit of what? Um, oh, great. I'm sorry. My, I'm being a little sensitive here. Well, while you're getting that, I want to just touch on um, the education piece, which I don't think um, we really talk about enough. You know, we whether you have a large salon or or a, a small salon. When you're with a guest, your mindset is almost maintain timing, maintain consultation. It's almost like different stages in what you're doing, right? Vish is really a way for us to go back and look at things, whether clients have amazing feedback or feedback that we can improve on. Um, we've had situations that <clears throat> insight, it, without having Vish, we would have never known. Um, we had an employee a few years back who um, was having concerns with gray color. No one was able to uh, figure out why the gray coverage was such a concern. Um, Vish really gave us the opportunity to go back in and see this from a bigger picture. So the Vish scale allowed us to look at formulations and why it wasn't working and come to find out she wasn't using formulations correctly at all, um, which was highlighting a huge factor for us. But without Vish, we would have never known that. And when you, the, the dollars, you mentioned something when we talked, you, and this is something saloners really should pay attention to. So lean in and focus on this conversation here with, with Jess. She's using money that she's created with the, with the profitability factor of the color to create a benefits package. Isn't that correct? Yep. So you'll see um, on the slide there that we, the number is large. And due to that is just in full transparency, we do charge for parts and labor separately. So what you'll see there is um, the revenue that we took in from Bowls of Color um, between both of our locations. We do set margins accordingly, and that helps us, A, restock our color bar with full costs from what we're charging guests for Bowls of Color, but also using the proceeds from our margins to pay for a full um, company-matched retirement plan. We also have full paid time off for everyone that comes to work for us after a set period of time they get paid sick days vacation days and the ability to live in this ever-changing world care for their children and take time off without feeling pressured of not having any revenue come through while they're not at work well it's really about finding revenue anywhere you can yeah josh yeah and i think so one of our number one sources of churn that we see from our salons is that the stylist don't want to use the system or they can't buy into the system, whatever the case may be. So that's something I always encourage salon owners. Let's get the system in place. Let's work together. Then find an incentive in the place. If you go and just start paying people commission on this, that's not really a retention tool because they could go across the street and someone could, someone could say, Oh, you make 50% commission. Now I'll give you 55%. Let's, you know, come across the street and work for me. You, if you invest in people's retirement, you invest in their health spending, and you give that, and you are a pro, you know, you're an employer that really gives them benefits that most salons don't or that booth renters can't give. I think it's a massive re retention tool. Um, it's, you know, I'm Canadian. Like I, for us, we think that, you know, healthcare is certainly a right and we have American employees and that's, and in the part of the negotiation strategy, they always, like, they're always talking about with healthcare. I'm like, whatever your healthcare plan is, we'll pay for it. It's something that as an employer, you should put first and foremost, because if your staff are worrying about that, they're not focused on work. So we really encourage people to take this money, work with us so we can forecast after 30 days, well, how much money is this going to be at the end of 12 months? Then take that bucket of money and reinvest in your staff. And it's completely up to the salon or what they want to do with that. But we really see the most success is 401k and, um, and, and health spending as well. We, we also see PTO. So to put dollars towards a PTO plan, is incredible and a tying into the sick leave that that's really something we really try to help a lot of salon owners launch into their you know this day and age especially after the pandemic time off flexibility things like this are really really hot topics um so salon owners i, I have a little 
uh, a question for you guys at this point in time, I'd like to take a pause as we look into some of the challenges. Here are some of the challenges that we see happening. Can you guys all think about some of the first challenges that you really want to address uh, that are priorities for you in 2023? Just type into the chat. If you guys just all just go to the chat, type it in the chat. If it's one of these, that's fine. Which one is your top uh, challenge that you would say? Or, or if there's something else that's not on this list, type it in. We'd like to collect that data uh, of what you feel is really, really challenging. And maybe during the demo, you can bring those kind of questions up. You guys can ask those challenges about, see how, how Vish can resolve that. But some of the challenges that we talked about uh, that we feel are important to bring up today is color waste and unreliable formulas, which we've addressed, missed services on final tickets, excess stock and inaccurate inventory management, which is a huge challenge, I know, scarce profitability, which is always a challenge, and lack of data on color cost and pricing. These are all big challenges. Um, I'm not sure who would like to go first and dive into this, but maybe some resolution or some solutions that you guys can offer to it or addressing this slide before we move on. Is good? Anybody in the chat? Let's look in the chat and see if um, anybody have anything that's different in the chat. Would you guys all agree? Give me a thumbs up if you think these are all big challenges of salon owners. Yeah. So Vish does a beautiful job at resolving these things. Yeah. So let's talk about color waste. Josh, you want to dive in first on this one, or Jess, you want to? Yeah, dive? I can certainly jump in here. Um, so this is important. So the these are our numbers here. So in the pink bar, that's how much color is being used, and then the purple and there, that's the amount of waste. Keep in mind that this is pulled from our uh, group of salons that are, you know, that over time have become much more efficient. So the numbers in your salon are likely thirty to forty plus percent higher than this if you're not using Vish. And if your reway is not above 90%, then your number would be higher as well. So these are benchmarks that we've created. Our top, you know, our, and this is the median or the middle of the, the average. So our top, top salons are about 20% less than this. Um, so, but this data alone, so the waste is the waste is certainly an issue, but understanding what goes into your services is super important and how you're pricing those services. And then parts and labor is something that less than 10% of our salons use because it's how the salon industry hasn't operated for a long period of time. So we use this to benchmark. So for a new growth application, if you're using $5 for product, if someone uses more because they've had more great coverage or longer hair, then you start triggering extra product charges, which is the more standard approach that we see. So, you know, we collect a lot of data, we analyze a lot of data, and then we work with our salon owners to help them benchmark against where, where they should be industry-wide versus a lot of people just, unfortunately, a lot of people, like people with shorter hair pay, they're paying, they're making, you're making good margin on people that come back more frequently. The people that are stretching out their visits are coming eight to 12 weeks, are getting a discount and you're taking a loss on that. So we yeah. benchmark everybody against, okay, this is where you should be and you use more, you charge more. What I really love about this is that we have always promoted this very fluid pricing strategy. Don't just, you know, be straight across the board, everyone's static, you know, to really think and, and pull apart and just assess and analyze every single service and really do it. This is just wonderful. And I, I'm really impressed at the ability to really start to do this. It gives you a salon owner a tool to really look at that and not be overwhelmed by that. Just so we walk people through this because I understand this is like new data to a lot of people. And a lot of like, you know, people are like, oh no, well, we, you know, they want to charge the same price. And I understand the sentiment because they're afraid of you know increasing the price for someone that's come in for the past 10 years, every six to eight weeks. But right. the reality is like, I can't go into a restaurant and say, I want a glass of wine and they're just giving me the same price, no matter what I pick off the shelf. Yeah. And that happens in the industry. Like not only do people have different lengths of hair, the color costs are different. Most salons carry four different color lines. The pre and within those lines of price is different. So like ammonia free is more expensive than, you know, your, your standard permanent color. So it's important that salon owners, whether you use Vish or you don't use Vish, if you can take anything from this call, is that your cost of goods vary with every single visit. So you need to find a way to baseline that and make sure that you're making the same margin or a greater margin, depending on what someone pulls off the shelf. Exactly. Anything to add before I move on? James or Jess? Yeah, I think- I would say, oh, I'm sorry, Jess. Uh, nope. We use a, our main color line as a three-part color line. 
and it is ammonia free. So obviously the cost factor is going to be a little bit different. Um, this has been crazy because if they do have to go back and mix more color, when you're busy, it's a Saturday, you're running around and you need to mix more color, whether the client came in, uh, they're a few weeks later than they normally would, or their hair is a little longer. This has been such a, a game changer and lifesaver for us because the, the, the computer just tells you what you need to mix more of. So I, I really appreciate that one. Another, another great feature of this. Jess. Yeah, I was just going to say that, you know, for a lot of our stylists, because we have such a large staff, waste is inevitable, especially when you're seeing a new guest where there's no reference point to start from. But we've used Vish long enough to know that we can use the Vish data that's pulled off of the dashboard to kind of collect information to get an average idea of how many um, grams or what size bowl a glaze client needs versus what size bowl the average balayage guest needs. So if you're seeing a guest for the first time, you can minimize a lot of your waste by looking at benchmark guides that we have posted throughout the salon. That's actual luscious data. You know, the average luscious guest uses X amount for a glaze. So we'll use that as a reference point to start minimizing waste that even if you don't have parts and labor will reduce the cost that you're maintaining as your overhead. Yeah, that's and awesome. I see with a lot of different color lines. So one, you know, you'll see Shades EQ is probably the most ubiquitous color used across this industry. We see it in almost every salon. And most people are opening up the bottle of a Shades EQ and dumping it out for a toner, but we know that you can get two toners out of that. So we're, you know, we're more than happy to connect with people to show, share these benchmarks and sort of like, okay, here's some practices that you can adopt um, that will, you know, immediately hit your bottom line. Yeah. And you have a pretty uh, tech savvy uh, system here with the iPad in the back room, right? The color room, it would be an iPad, it would be a scale, and uh, it would help you get a little bit more precise with your measuring and your formulations. Yeah. Yeah. And what we really aim to do, and we spent, you know, um, we spent a long time in salon studying, and we actually have a new version coming out this year of a rebuild from the ground up. My, so my brother, you know, originally came up with this idea, but my two co-founders are engineers. So, you know, we didn't, we weren't out there advertising our technology very much for the first few years. We were trying to figure it out. So if you look at that interface and while it's not perfect, we definitely have room to grow. Um, it's very visual. So we want our stylists to be able to mix color the same way they normally would. So instead of pressing zero on the scale, they're simply pressing the next dot, the icon. So we've tried to make it as simple as possible. And like I said, there's a new version coming up that's a big leap up um, to make it even easier because we know like it's been it's been tough. Like we have, we have you know our retention is over ninety percent of the of the of the salons that we work with, um, and you know we see so many salon owners that um, they see the value, but there's still some friction points in the technology that we need to get to to make sure that all of our stylists like it and make it easier to use and make it sort of a little bit more fun and a bit more engaging. So it's not easy putting technology where there wasn't technology before, um, but we're very dedicated to working with stylists and getting their feedback. And we're interested to see, because there's a lot of you know salon owners that have been using our technology on the space with our new version coming out, sort of like just seeing that we do give a shit, we hear what they're saying, and we're constantly trying to make this technology fit them. Um, but like I said, it's a process and, and it's certainly challenging. Well, I mean, creating tech around with salon with salon professionals is uh, like it seems to be an insurmountable task, I know. Um, and of course, there's going to be a learning curve with anything. This is the new way of doing things. And this is kind of what I was saying in the beginning as I've learned more and more about this. Color management systems are going to become tech, tech systems that are around what we do every single day is just going to become the way the salon industry is moving. We have to just jump on board and, and, and figure it out, you know? And we're, we're, I think there's some other companies in this space that um, in the past, and you know, the ones that, you know, um, I think they've run into some challenges. One thing that we're very sophisticated in doing quite well, and you're going to see some further integrations happening this year is that we tap, we tie into the front desk software. So integrating with software that was built 20 years ago was no challenge, but we were integrated with most major POS companies. Um, I think we're the most integrated platform in this space and we're going to be going deeper. So I'm actually have some reports and stuff. So uh, Jess, I'll be going to um, uh, the uh, show in the, in the spring 
um, the fill where we'll be um, highlighting some of the deeper data dives that we're doing. And we're actually connecting the front of desk data. So now we're going to start showing on profitability, not just cost of goods sold. So we're actually going to show the full story and that will be coming out in Q2 and Q3 this year um, with some select POS providers. That's really, really wonderful. Say those two things again, Josh. Yeah, no, we're just basically, so right now all of your revenue data is being reported in your salon software and Vicious reporting in your inventory management and your cost of goods sold. The next iteration for us is we're going to be connecting those both together in a dashboard. So you'll be able to see the full story and you'll be able to look at your profitability for each individual stylist in each, in each service report. Um, and then what you're looking at right here is Vish front desk. And this is the widget that sits on top of the salon software. So this will basically is a digital traveler. So it will show you how much product you use for a particular service and how much to charge. Um, but we'll be... Um, this will be going away um, within the next 12 to 18 months, and this will be integrated directly back into the salon software as well. That's interesting. So now you're using a widget, but you guys are looking to, to, to remove it and do uh, more of a complete. Yeah. And just to touch on that, the reason why we, we haven't, and it's no slight to the POS companies because they've had a challenge of servicing thousands and thousands of clients and build, rebuilding their platform. So we had to out, sort of prove that we were here to stay. And now they're opening up their ch checkout window um, to be able to integrate directly into the checkout. So it was like, this will be a pricing update. Um, but the front desk component of this technology generates the most profit for sure. Um, but this is where it's really important that we understand the inventory management. We understand the usage. We understand your how you pay your staff and how you charge your clients. because you know, while Jess does parts and labor, uh, which is good, and it's the one that generates the most profit, you can't do that right out of the gates without a very tight, like dialed in machine. Because what ends up happening, people think that they're mixing 40 grams of color for a new growth application, but they're going to have instances, and I see these every day where someone's mixing 300 grams, 400 grams. So you can't take a $30 service and jack it to a $100 service. It's important that we put this system in place understand your inventory then set a threshold of product allowance and eventually get to parts and labor but that can take anywhere our most successful salons now that's taken them more than 12 months to get to parts and labor because it's a cultural shift in how you're charging and it's really important that you streamline how much you're using first before you get there i would completely agree with you on that these are the three reports that you have for inventory management with this system yeah, so we basically, it's pretty simple. We break it down to how much you're consuming. So you can take a snapshot of just seeing what your percentage is of each manufacturer used in the, in the salon. Um, and then when you're doing your inventory, so we work with a lot of salon-centric reps now where they're actually pulling the inventory reports directly off of our website and they're ordering for the or ordering for the staff, uh, for the salon. And back to the scale, the reason why we can do this is because there's no digital display. So the only way to work around your system, and if we see systems out there that still have the digital display on their scale. If you're not, um, if you're not capturing 100% of your color mixed, if you missed six services, your total, your entire inventory is off. So we're in salons with 50 chairs in them, going through $20,000 of the product per month, and we're actually able to do inventory reporting for them, which I believe we're the only system in this space that's actually able to do that. So if I may ask, the first report, which is a product usage report, uh, Jessica and James, can you guys uh, just share really quickly in like one or two sentences, like what you feel this helps you understand as a salon owner to run your business better? Yeah, absolutely. So the product usage is my favorite um, product uh, report that's ever been generated for us. This shows us real time what we're using by the gram, by each tube of color, all the way through our developers, our smoothing treatments, and it will help us determine what needs to be ordered again. Okay. James, do you like that one? <laughs> yeah, I love that, Jess. And developers are a, one of those things, usually they're stored under the counter, right, or under the cabinet that all of a sudden you turn around and you're like, why do we have so much 40 volume that we never use? Um, but I actually like it to go back even longer in data. So if I have a staffer that we want to raise pricing on or whatever it is, we can break it down and we can look at a longer stretch of time within that service provider. So it's it just gives us really good um, planning metrics to make sure what the next level is. Not just, I love it on the day, but I look at it for future use as well. 
And just to touch on that as well, um, you know, it's great that we can increase profit, but I mean, a lot of businesses struggle with cash flow. So when you have enough data, we'll look at how many tubes of color you've gone through over a 12 month period. And we'll look at your maxes and mins and you carry in your salon. So, uh, you know, why are you carrying six tubes of 2N when you're going through two a year? So we'll try to reduce the amount of inventory that you're holding on your shelf as well. Nice. Nice. And so really these reports are going to help you just be a better coach to your team as well when you're doing coaching sessions and sitting down and really mapping out how they're doing business too behind the chair. Um, the manufacturer report. Just this is, yeah. So this, this is all one report. So basically you click on one and what you're seeing is the deeper dive. So you can see, okay, I'm using 9% of, I can see the Pravana maybe, and then you, yeah. it's just diving down. So this is all, this okay. is the product usage report and you're just seeing the three different phases. So it's, What's the split in the salon? And then what's the split within the within that manufacturer? Nice. Do you have intention of having more reports into the future and getting uh, My goal, honestly, is to get rid of most of the VISH dashboard and integrate this directly back into the POS. We know that you run your business from your salon software. So the goal here isn't to create two different places to go. It's to push this data and integrate deeper. And then the whole goal, like in an ideal scenario, you don't even look at your reporting over a period of time, even in the POS. If you have this dialed in, you should be able to take a snapshot. And it's really how I run my business is like, you know, eventually you dial everything in of how you're pricing, how you're paying all of that. And then you can have one simple dashboard on your phone saying, yep, everything is green, cool, cool. Now I can worry about my next problem. Your, the business is caring for clients. The business is getting people in your door and making sure that they're, so the, the more dialed in you can make your software so it's operating in the background and it's not your main focal point, like that's great software. Great software should not have you deep deep diving on a, on a regular basis. It should be sort of like your canary in the coal mine, like, oh shit, our rebook rate's gone down or oh, our waste is or our reway's gone down. Oh, with the, Now I need to fix that. But great right. software should be not a big part of your life, if that makes sense. So this dashboard is is uh, something that you think is potentially going to just disappear because eventually just because you're going to be integrating deeper into the POS. That that certainly is our goal. Okay. Anything you guys want to share with this metric is? This yeah. Is so that's just the, that's the product charges that we've been able to pump back into the system, uh, pump back into the industry. So seventeen point five million dollars uh, in the United States that we've seen in extra product charges across the twelve hundred salons. So. It's something that the product charges are, it's, it's quite interesting. People, people, everybody thinks, oh, we charge for extra product. The reality is you don't. People think they charge for extra bowls. So people, I've looked at salons, says, oh, we, we have an extra bowl charge for $20. I'm like, well, what's an extra bowl? Is that 10 grams or is that 100 grams? So what this seven, this is the slippage. This is like, okay, I mix 50 grams as opposed to 40 grams or if I'm doing parts and labor, but these are product charges that, that just didn't exist in the industry before because people are like, I ah, don't worry about it. It's a little bit of an overmix. So that's what this number is. And how does this impact a salon owner's profitability, would you say? <clears throat> it's massive. I mean, the average profit margin for a salon in the United States is 4.9%. Um, I just did an analysis of two salons and we've increased their margin by 12%. So they, we've taken them from a 5% to a 17% profit margin. So I talk to a lot of salon owners that don't really want to dial in and use this data. And as, as sad as it sounds, um, a lot of salon owners would be better off being behind the chair for another salon because they have all the headaches and all the liability of running a salon, but they're actually not making any profit to make it worth their while. So mm -hmm. unless you're like prepared to run a business and really dial it in, you know, it's, it's a very, very challenging, stressful endeavor to do all this and not take any money home at the end of the day. So salon owners, are you, how many of you, if you just put it into the chat, are really focused in on driving your profitability up this year? I mean, it's always a constant effort, but really dialed into doing it. And it's an industry-wide thing too, right? I mean, I think, you know, we sp speak to a lot of salon owners and a lot of people are afraid of booth renting. Um, they're, you know, threatened by walkouts, which is a very interesting, um, it's, an, it's, it's an actual threat in this space. Like I can't imagine running a business where I was like half of my staff could go across the street and take half of my revenue. So I think it's super important that the industry gets used to charging their worth, that the stylists get treated well, that they get benefits, they do all these different things. 
And salon owners need help. And that's why we haven't taken the approach of download the software and figure it out for yourself. Like we will consult with you as much as you need to make sure you're getting the most out of this system. Right. If I can just add one thing in there really quick, Nikki, that Josh didn't mention yet. Um, our, our main line that we carry, our main color line is about to go through its third price increase since coming back from COVID next in March. So um, this has been paramount for us. We're already planning to make sure that we're pricing accurately. I mean, if they go up five or 10% and the cost that it takes to get there and we didn't have this, we wouldn't, by the time you turn around and say, oh, wow, we have to raise the prices, we're able to go in right away and make those adjustments quickly so we don't lose out because then if not only are your salons not charging what they should be, right, charging their worth, then you have an increase of five or 10%. That's just another round of loss for you salon owners that are out there that there should be no reason why you're not capturing that. And if you look at a pricing increase, if you actually, if you do parts and labor, if you roll out extra product charges properly, a pricing increase is, a next, is additional profit for you if, you if you put it in the system. If traditionally you have to wait for your next pricing increase, uh, your, you know, your menu, your service pricing increase, which is like, you know, once a year, maybe for salons. Mm -hmm. If you just increase your cost of goods sold with Vish, then all of a sudden your profit margin is going to go up by the same amount. And I think what's really interesting, because we attack this from two parts, we really address the usage. Um, our top salons are using, I have 200 to 300% markup on their hair color right now because their cost of application went from $8 to $12 down to $3 to $4. So to get the clients to pay the same amount, they actually have to increase their margin by 200%. So I noticed there's a lot of people that have been, uh, you know, a few people that have been commenting in the chat. If you're not getting the most out of Ish, connect with our team. We have an abundance of resources. We're always available. We have a big customer success team. We will be there to help you as much. And we don't charge more for this. Hopefully, at some point we might. But right now, um, you know, we want to get you dialed in and make sure that you're using the system effectively. And if you feel like you're not getting the service from our team, I mean, I don't have much client interaction anymore. My brother does, um, but my contact of it, my contact information is available on the website. My meeting link is available on the website. My, I think my cell phone number might even be. So if you're not getting the most out of Vish and you're not getting the feedback you need from my team, reach out to me directly and I'll put some of the senior on your account to make sure you get the most out of the system. There is one question on here. Um, Catherine uh, asked, uh something with a scale she's had it with another company in the past uh the scale was a challenge and if the scale uh does, does sometimes does that kind of come up with some challenges and then how do you resolve that um this is literally the best bluetooth scale globally on the market um try tested and true this is our third generation scale if there's something wrong with your scale with vish um we'll replace it. We have a less than a 1% defect, like after like 24 to 36 months, the load sale might get a little bit worn out. Um, but I know our competitor and like, I don't want to badmouth our, our competition because like, you know, salon scale, the CEO, amazing person, what she's doing for the industry is incredible. Their scale quality from what I understand is nowhere near what ours is. Um, so I think if you tried our competitor, one of the, there's a couple issues is that they have a digital display. It only measures to one gram. So it's off a lot and it's a cheap scale. So like I said, great team. They have a great company and what they're doing is incredible. Like I'm not, but I, you know, we're product focused. We're engineering focused and our scale is, you won't find a better one in the market. And I must say we've been using Vish uh, for two and a half years, a hundred percent of the time. When we initially launched Vish, we got rid of all of our um, manual digital scales. And in the last two and a half years, we have only needed to use them once. And that's because we had an internal uh, power failure. So as far as quality goes, I mean, there are you know learning curves that may happen, especially if you have a large staff, but the quality of the scale has never been a question for us, especially how much it's used, how many people we have in between both locations. Um, the quality is definitely something that is, is not a concern. It has never been for us. And just to show you as well, so it's a fully sealed on the top. So you can actually do pour water on this. The load cell is upside down. This was originally just designed for espresso, which is really sensitive to one tenth of the gram. We buy this. You can see these in a lot of high-end coffee shops. They come in black and white, but we get this. Uh, they do a custom build for us. Um, honestly, like 
I take this thing, I throw it in my backpack. It travels with me everywhere. It measures to one tenth of the gram. It's never off. But if you have any issues with your scale, we can troubleshoot. Um, and if it's broken, because maybe it dropped on the ground or something, it is still a piece of hardware. Shit breaks all the time. Um, we'll replace it for you. Yeah. Um, Jess and James, is there anything that you would share with the audience at this point, just about converting or the demo or um, just overall how it's helped? Anything, any message of uh, inspiration? Yeah, I think uh, for us, I mean, all of us, we're living in a, in a world that's ever changing with surprises around every corner. And I think we've let enough time pass to see that, you know, especially with new years, a lot of people come with new resolutions and goals. Uh, you know, we have a responsibility to ourselves and to our staff to really define where we want the future to head for us. Um, whether you want to decrease your time behind the chair or give your team paid time off or give them health benefits, it has to come from somewhere. You know, we have to figure out, unless you're raising your prices um, or trying to figure out how to maintain your cash flow, for us specifically, this has helped us define a lot of the solutions to the goals that we've set forth. And I think for us, we just have to really figure out where we want the future to go for us. This is an easy win for us. Um, there's a bit of a learning curve, but the responsibility is all ours. And this is an easy win for, for most of us. Thank you, Jess. Nikki. Yes, Iva. Nick at Flourish wants to know if he can get one for his tea at home. <laughs> <laughs> maybe James you know and we've said this I know it's the new year and it's 2023 and and we talked to so many salon owners through beauty business reset and otherwise a lot of our people are on here um, you can change anytime you want you don't have to blame it on the new year and saying you're going to do things differently um, listen if you have a, a experienced staff that means they're seasoned that means they've been doing hair for a while um, make sure that everybody's excited about the changes that you're going to implement um, this, the education team has been super helpful in walking through any challenges, even in terms of where you place your scale uh, for a busy Saturday, if you have a lot of stylists or if you need multiple scales for your salon. But, but change is good. I don't know why everybody's so adverse to change, but look at the profitability. Look at the things that Jess has been able to do and all the benefits she's been able to, in, in, to give to her staff and, and to grow from. But change whenever you want. Make it empowering. Make sure... You know, I, I know a lot of salon owners think the complaint department is open 24 um, seven. Let's shift that mindset and say that change is a good thing and change is something that's gonna be impactful, not just to growing your staff, but to your bottom line. Right, and just a few more minutes guys, so just hold on tight, but Josh, any you wanna share the special event offer and what you guys have, um, what, what you've put together for our group? Yeah, so no matter how big your salon is, whether you need one of these or four or five of these, these are $250 each. We'll give you, if you book a meeting from this link, then we'll give you the scales for free. Um, we're super flexible in getting everybody up and running. We're not, a, we don't lock people in. I think if you get free scales, we ask for a six month commitment just, and we'll give you dedicated resource to get you going. We even have a money back guarantee. So if this system isn't working for you, and that's super cheesy, but the only reason why we don't have a free trial is because we used to do that and people would let it sit on their shelf. So if you commit to, to commit to us and you go through our process and it's not for you, I'll give you your money back. It's not, we're not here to gouge you. We're here to help you. Um, anybody that wants to connect, I have some time today. Um, Terry asked, there's a monthly cost to this. It ranges from $150 to $300 per month, depending on the size of your salon. And I think James and Jessica can both attest to this, that it ends up being about a 20 to one return on investment. I've seen it as high. I just did an analysis of a four, the salon had four locations. They had a 2,600% uh, return on investment within the first 12 months. So, Well, I, you know, one of the salon owners that we, we work with, um, huge salon, huge, like, I mean, multi-million dollar salon. Uh, she just implemented and she's like instant profits, instant. Well, I mean, they put a lot of work and prep into it. I'm saying the moment it kind of launched and got going, she was really pretty impressed with it. And this is really one of the reasons we reached out to you guys to really bring it in, not only for our own business, but really to share it with other business owners, because salon owners, you guys deserve to be profitable and you deserve to learn the things that you need to have as resources in your salon to make your job easier, to look sleeker, to draw a new modern workforce to your company and to just make more money. You guys deserve all of that. And these are amazing resources to do that with. Um, yeah, the last, the last sort of thing I'll say about it all is that 
it, it, it can be intimidating. Um, and that's why we strongly recommend that you don't touch pricing. You don't try to roll up parts and labor out of the gate. Understand what's happening in your business and put a process in place. Whether it takes three months or 12 months to change your pricing at the front desk, it'll be worthwhile in the years to come. But it's really important that, you know, we understand your business and then you go through our onboarding process. And, you know, I know, there, like I said, there's multiple people commenting that they would like to get more out of Vish. Re-engage with our team and we'll, uh, we'll be happy to help you out. Um, thank you so much, guys, for, for doing this. Before everyone jumps off really quickly, I just want to say thank you so much that you guys took the time to really do this. We have a very full schedule coming out this year with a ton of amazing collaborative webinars with some incredible companies that are going to be able to help you guys just, just solidify what you're doing for this year. Um, please join the uh, our private Facebook group. It's called TSP Community. That's our private Facebook group where we do a lot of shares on there. Um, uh, some other people do shares on there, but we are about to launch our annual calendar for 2023 for all of the classes and all the webinars. And a lot of them are free. Some of them aren't, you know, because some of them obviously require a little bit more effort and work, uh, but some of them are free because they, we just wanna share that information with you. So please get onto TSP community. If you follow us at, uh, well, follow Vish, right? So you guys have Instagram, you have uh, Facebook, uh, which is Vish. Um, and then Instagram is Vish Salons, right? Yeah. So follow them as well. Um, and, and follow us on the Statements Project and on Mentor Masters. This way we can share with you all of the things that we have and, and that are coming up for you. Uh, we hope that you guys next week, next Monday, we're gonna be having a class uh, with Tracy Napotnik about educators or trainers that are writing a curriculum or writing a class and creating this class a course schedule uh, for the new year. So join us on that and we'll make posts about that all week. Thank you guys so much. I really deeply appreciate you guys. And, and we'll be reaching out soon, Josh. Um, so for sure, we'll, we'll definitely get on top of that. Uh, we have a lot of things that we're launching this year too. So before we leave, if there's any questions, does anyone have any questions at all before we, we jump off? Anyone? Let's see. I think we got it. Can I unmute? Yes, Nick, please. Nick is going to unmute. No, you're, oh. you're on mute. You're on mute, Nick. <laughs> okay. There we are. Hi, you guys hearing me all right? Yes. Perfect. Okay, great. So to just give a little background on our salon, we're a salon here in Maryland, Westminster. Um, we've been using Vish for a little over three months. So we just had our most recent check-in where we kind of looked over our color usage. We're hitting a point where we've seen a huge majority of our book and can start acting to pull from history. I just had a couple questions related to, um, as we begin to look towards pricing, discussing reducing waste and targeting sort of our future pricing, whether we adjust our prices across the board or look towards those additional product charges. Um, first off, my question is just in utilizing Vish, what would you guys say is the number one key to reducing waste? What I took away from our most recent meeting was that it's pulling from history. Would you say that's accurate? Pulling from history, assuming that so re, the number one driver is the reway percentage. So you want to be close to as 100% as possible. And we have we have salons that are doing thousands of service a month that are 99%. And then um, mixing from history is definitely the driving factor as well. And, all, and then one behavior that we do notice is that people new using the system um, often throw the waste out before they reweigh because they think they're going to get in trouble. Um, so encourage waste, uh, don't oversaturate the hair and make sure that you're mixing from history. Um, and so, yeah, but just, just, do you know, is your reweigh percentage over 90%? It is. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. So reweigh percent over 99% and over 90% and then mix it from history, your, your waste will come down. That's great to hear. Um, I will just say to, to share some feedback from us. Um, I'm not a stylist myself. I'm salon coordinator here at Flourish. So I just help manage the team. And as I assist with color mixing and applying the Vish software, I would say when it comes to pulling from history, the some of the difficulties we've had are our style team is really creative. And I love getting to see that in action. But it means a lot of times 
um, and especially certain stylist books, someone will pop in and they will be looking for something radically different from what they've had in the recent past or even the distant past. And so when it comes to pulling from history, stylists will hit this barrier where they pull it up and you know they want to jump right into mixing. They're looking at what they used and they're like, I don't, I don't want this. This is not what I'm looking for. This is not even in the realm. Are there some tools that you guys can build in that can maybe still communicate some of the, the best information of pulling from history, like just the raw amount of color used that a stylist can at least keep in mind as they're planning a service like that, where it's going to so, be a completely different formula, but on the same client. So what we have, we have a new build coming out. Um, it's mobile friendly as well. So the stylist can actually mix color. They can build formulas away from the color station and they can pre-program how much they want. So as they're building their formula, they can say, I want 40 grams of this, two grams of this, and a one and a half to one ratio and they can save it for later. So they can do more planning. That's coming out, um, it's in beta right now. So that'll be coming on a mobile, that'll be a, like a, a complement to the app. So they can sit down at their lunch break, or whatever, build the formulas for the day, and then they can go. So that, we've, we've heard that information, we've heard that feedback, and that is a feature that's coming out. It's built, it's released, it's just gonna be, it's gonna take a, a couple months to get it fully released to production. Nice. Yeah, love that. And just one more comment on next, and then we're over in time. That's why pro product allowances are vital because we get people doing this all the time, but they're over there saying like, I don't want to do the same thing I mixed last time. Well, that shouldn't shoot your profit margin to zero as the salon owner. So that's why I say, no problem. You can only use $5 for the color and we have to charge extra product. And we see this all the time with fashion colors and rainbow, like in all of those, like a new growth or an all over is not a $60 service anymore. It may be $60 for the product. So set the thresholds of how much you're budgeting for the color. And if they over mix or they not even over mix, if they use more product, because someone's coming in with an Instagram photo saying, I want my hair to look like this. They need to be comfortable saying no problem, but we're going to have to pay for extra product. And if you need any coaching on that, please connect with us. No, you nailed it. This very thank next you. question. That's exactly where we'll be headed. So thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? That has a question. I know we're over time and it's okay. We want to answer all your questions. So if you guys have to go, please do. Um, but if there's anyone else with questions, we want to make sure that we give you what you need today. So if there's any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Are we all good? Anyone, if you have a question, just come off mute and otherwise we'll wrap up today. Um, the last comment that we'll have is that if anybody thinks they'll struggle with onboarding, we do have three hair color educators that will visit on site and roll this out in person as well. So that is a, that is a thing that we do offer. Beautiful. Guys, get the demo. If you don't have Vish, get the demo so that you can at least do it individually to with your own questions and what you have going on so that you can really see in detail how the functionality of the, the program works. Just get the demo. I mean, what is it going to hurt? You know? So. excellent beautiful thank you so much everyone for your time it was wonderful and we look forward to seeing you next week please register for our webinar uh, webinar next week okay thanks thank you josh thanks james thank thanks guys thanks jess thanks everyone bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.